Come on, come on, 200, 200, let's do this. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Welcome back to Phoenix, Arizona, and welcome to another video. As you probably saw in the title of the video, we're gonna be putting a steering wheel on uh, my 350Z today. So, reason I'm doing that, uh, the steering wheel on this car is pretty good, but it's not perfect. Not that it has to be either. Um, when I bought it, I mean, this car's got, you know, 180 some thousand miles on it. Little inserts are a little bit messed up. There's some separating up here. All in all, it's in pretty good shape. But honestly, I just wanna know what all the fuss is about when it comes to these aftermarket steering wheels. I've seen a couple videos out there now where you know people have said that the steering wheel is actually one of the best mods you can do to the car. I have never once put a different, an aftermarket steering wheel on one of my cars. So again, that's kind of why I'm doing it today. Now, selecting a steering wheel isn't as easy as you would think. There's like hundreds of options out there. And me personally, I wanted everything to match. I wanted the hub, I wanted the quick release if I went that way, which I did, and the steering wheel all to be the same brand. You know, I didn't want an energy short hub, a Sparco, uh, quick release, which I don't even know if you can do, and then an OMP or, or some other brand steering wheel. I wanted it all one brand, so I did go with the energy setup. It did seem to be the most cost effective. Um, I upgraded to the quick release because I thought I might change the seat in here someday. Um, you know, it came when I, when I bought it, it was ripped up down here. And then I noticed when I was watching one of my older videos that I was getting tossed around in the seat quite a bit when I was doing some aggressive turns. So by having the quick release, if I do put a racing seat in there, if it's hard to get in and out of the car, I will be able to just pop the wheel off, hop in easy and pop it back on. Now that said, if uh, you're not gonna put a racing seat in your car, you probably don't need to waste money on the quick release unless you're just going for like cool points. Um, so there are options. I got, again, the NRG setup. So instead of doing a quick release, they do have like a four inch spacer. I'll put it up right over here so you can check that out. You'd save quite a bit. <laughs> I can't remember the exact price. Okay, price of the spacer here, price of the quick release here. Um, so you'd save quite a bit if you went that route. Now, I got this set up from Swap Shop Racing. It, um, they were the company that had the wheel that I really wanted, and they also had a discount code, so if I spent over 100 bucks there, I think I got like 10% off. So that's why I went with them. I'm also showing you that because uh, I wanted you to know that these are legit. Like, I know there's some, af uh, some fakes out there when it comes to like, you know, Sparco and energy and stuff, so you wanna make sure you're getting the real stuff. So let's unbox it real quick and check it out. Okay, and just so you guys know, I did pay for this. Uh, it was not sent to me free or anything. I know I already mentioned that, but again, I think that's important when you're watching these reviews and stuff. Some of this stuff's been shipped to people for free, so obviously they're gonna say good things about it. This one came from my own hard-earned dollars, again, from Swap Shop Racing. So total out the door, 444 shipped. And then here is everything. You guys can pause the screen. These are the uh, prices, and then of course the I don't know, stock numbers of the quick release, the hub, and the steering wheel, in case you want to replicate this setup. All right, cue the epic music. Okay, so real quick, first impressions here. Everything seems, you know, super legit, super well put together, high quality materials. Um, I don't know exactly what they're all made out of, but I mean, this this feels like good stuff to me. So this is the short hub. Um, you have to have one of these in order to adapt a quick release or a spacer or a steering wheel onto your car. So the short hub is necessary. So 
that first and then like I said before I opted for the quick release I like this one because it wasn't as obnoxious as the one uh, that you could get after it where the, with like the big wings on the side and then the steering wheel um, I just kept real simple I'm a simple dude uh, I like simple things I didn't I don't want a bunch of holes and cutouts and lines um, and this was the cleanest one uh, and also didn't have like that line up here I I don't know maybe someday I'll be like big on that but right now it's like do you really need that I don't know um, I just thought the black looked the cleanest and then I did opt for the higher end <laughs> higher end version of this wheel it does come in a perforated leather I thought that looked kind of cheap and then there's two versions of like this suede or Alcantara and uh, I went with the higher end version I think it, you know I think it cost me an extra 20 or 30 bucks but hopefully in the long run it's worth it because honestly the thing I'm worried about most with this wheel is just the wear that this will see but I'm telling you uh, in the box without putting anything on I mean this thing is pretty pretty firm pretty stiff materials feel good might be different when we get it on the car but so far I'm liking what I see let's start the install real quick before we do the install here's the Sparco setup if you went that way these are the part numbers this is what the cost of each one is so you would have paid about 676 and again I paid 440 for the energy setup so you get what you pay for uh, I'm hoping for, I'm hoping this is a value option but uh, we'll see when we get it in okay we'll start the install so first things first you want to make sure that your steering wheel is good and straight then take your 10 millimeter and disconnect the battery pump the brakes a few times make sure there's no juice in the system then flick the lights on too Okay, next you're just gonna take a flathead screwdriver and on both sides of the stock steering wheel you've got little tabs here and uh, right here. So just take the flathead and pop that open. Okay, for these little bolts inside the factory steering wheel um, airbag, you're gonna wanna use this funky little Torx. It's got like a hole in the, uh, the middle of it. I got mine at Harbor Freight, it's a T30. Okay, once you've got those uh, bolts out, you should be able to just pull the airbag back and out. Okay, so to disconnect the airbag sensors, you just want to lift up on these little black uh, tabs with your screwdriver, and then they just pop up and out. Those are disconnected, you've got your airbag assembly, which is actually one of the sweetest ones on the market, in my opinion, with that Z. Next, I'm just gonna take a needle nose pliers and disconnect the, I think it's the horn here. I don't know if it's a ground or what, but you gotta disconnect this so that you can pull the wheel off. So I'm gonna do that off camera so I don't break anything. Okay, now that that's disconnected, I'm gonna take off the uh, bolt or the nut, sorry, that holds it there. It's a 19 millimeter. I'm just gonna use a uh, breaker bar with a 19 millimeter, maybe an extension. We'll see, I'm gonna do it off camera though so I don't mess anything up. Took a little elbow grease, but I got it. Mega man points if you do it all by yourself. And I'm just going to loosen the bolt. I'm not going to take it, or sorry, the nut. I'm not gonna take it all the way off. And this is the fun part. You get to see how hard it's gonna be to get this thing off. Make sure it's straight one more time. Oh. That was easy! <laughs> so I'll just remove the nut. And I think we're careful here. And this will just pop right off. Bingo. So it's probably worth mentioning now, my Z is a base model, so all I do have is ABS, or sorry, um, SRS airbags, and then the horn. Uh, most of you guys probably have a cruise control wire in here too that you'll have to deal with, so just FYI. And while we got everything off, I'm just gonna take a microfiber quick and wipe down in here because I'm sure it's never been cleaned. The short hub and actually everything else unfortunately doesn't come with instructions but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Basically the logo and then this uh, hole where your, I don't know if that'll focus or not, this hole where your um, quick disconnect spacer or steering wheel will go has a line or a, a circle on it and then there's a, a line on the steering wheel. Hmm, I don't know what you call it. Shaft maybe? No jokes, no jokes on that one. So anyways, you just want to line up the whole 
with the line here and obviously have the NRG logo facing up. You'll uh, dip your wires down through here. And that's clean. Okay, then you'll just take your nut and put it back on the uh, shaft. Probably not super crucial, but somewhat crucial is the torque setting on this nut. I was reading online, I saw anywhere from about 25 to 40. So I've got my torque wrench here, and I'm gonna put it at 30 foot-pounds. Okay, and now that I've torqued that down, I just realized I didn't plug in the provided um, wire that Energy had in the kit for the horn. So um, I'm just going to use this one. I'm going to just connect the NRG one to it. And then also included in the kit is these little airbag resistors, I think. It makes you think you have airbags. I don't really care. I already have my SRS light on because I disconnected these, but I'll throw the resistors in just for good measure. Look at that. Look at that connection, it's good as stock. Plus if I ever um, pull this off and go back to stock or something, you know the original wire will be in there and I won't have lost it, so I'm fine with it. I'll tape, I'll tape that up. Now that that's all taped up, I'm just gonna take these provided uh, resistors that they have, each one of the SRS um, connectors has two little plugs in it right there. So you just take these, push one into each, like so, and like so. I'll probably still have a light because my passenger side airbag is disconnected and there's no resistor in it, but just to follow protocol, that's how you do it. Okay, once you got your resistors in, you can just stuff everything on the inside of the hub. Got my little horn piece out. Okay, so then the kit comes with two of these little rings here. Um, only one of them is gonna fit your short hub, so this is the one for mine. So I'm just gonna fish the horn wire through there. You can see all the bolt holes line up. And then you're gonna wanna take the base of the short hub and uh, the logo will face up, of course. And you're gonna wanna connect the yellow wire to your horn wire here and then this ground on the back of it will connect right up here on your ring. Okay, and I'm probably gonna have to do some of this off camera, but we'll slide the ground on there and then see if I can do it all at the same time. We'll put the power to the horn here. Another way. Like so. Then we just got to tuck the horn wire in as well. And get the top to the top again. And line these holes up. Let's see here, what do I got? Okay, now that I got everything tucked in and lined up, I kind of had to do a little bit off camera, but you can see the energy logo is still at top. There's that little dot right underneath the NRG. So you know that's the right way. And then the kit comes with these uh, supplied bolts. So I'm just gonna start threading those in. Next, I'm just tightening these in like a star pattern so I don't get one side way too tight. Obviously be careful here, you don't wanna strip one of these. Okay, next we just slide the quick release on, just kinda line up the logos like so. Next, gotta remove all these bolts so that we can bolt it to um, the quick release. As I brought it out here in the sun, I'm noticing a couple, couple minor imperfections. There's a little scratch right here, up here where the bolts were put on initially. There's a couple dings. I'm kind of, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I, don't, I could really care less, but maybe, maybe you guys who are gonna spend $400, 450 bucks for something like this, you'd wanna know, you know, stuff like that, so. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, but in case you're wondering, it's not perfect.
I actually think this thing looks kind of sweet without the horn. It'd be nice if they just gave you a little black circle there. The horn gets me in more trouble than I really need it. I probably shouldn't even be connecting the horn, but we'll connect the horn. So what we'll do is we'll fish this through. Of course, now is the time you can kind of pick where the energy logo goes. And then you're just gonna hook up the wires in the back, yellow to yellow and black to black. Little pro tip for you when you're hooking up the horn wires, uh, just put the steering wheel on with one bolt. You'll have to take it back out to put the uh, cap and horn back together, but if you're doing it by yourself, it's probably the easiest way. Okay, horn's connected. So we'll just tuck the horn wires back in here and then we'll get that bolt out. Once you got that bolt out, you can just put the cap for the horn uh, over the little horn button and then drop a bolt in. And I'm just gonna do one at a time here, go around the horn, no pun intended. Uh, and then uh, tighten it down in a star pattern and should be about good. Um, I don't think you need to torque these down too hard. I could, I mean, you strip this, you'd be, it'd be a bad day if you strip these because that goes straight into your quick release. So just hand tight. So you got that little safety lever up here. So I suppose you have to go like that. Not bad. The safety lever is kind of a pain, I guess, but. Like that. If you want to remove the safety lever that it comes with, um, it's just this little button right back here and you'd have to take this off again. There's a little um, Allen head screw in there that you'd pop out. I think I'll keep mine just because it is, there's a reason it's probably there I guess, but um, I might take it out down the road just so it's easier to pop it on and off. All right, time to reconnect that battery, see if the horn works. Testing horn, take one. Bingo. Just for fun, I thought I'd show this real quick. This is the old wheel lined up with the new wheel. The new wheel, I believe, is 350 millimeters or something like that. And as you can see, the old wheel is maybe just a tiny bit bigger. It's really close though. Here's another angle with the energy wheel on top of the stock one. And I'd say it's just a the stock one is just a tiny, tiny bit bigger, but they're very close in size. All right, if you're preparing to do this yourself, here's every tool I used. 10 millimeter on a socket, that was for the battery. Uh, needle nose, I used that for pulling the ground wire off the uh, factory steering wheel. This is the Allen kit for all the bolts included from Energy. Used a little bit of electrical tape for where I hooked up my horn. You won't need that if you use the Energy provided. Um, wiring, a little T30. Torx bit for your factory airbag bolts. Use the flathead screwdriver to pop off uh, the plastic covers on the factory airbags. An extension and a 19 mil for the steering wheel uh, nut. And then a breaker bar to get the nut off and a torque wrench to put it back on. All right, driving with the energy steering wheel. You definitely notice it. I'm not gonna say it's not noticeable. Uh, I've never driven a suede or Alcantara steering wheel, so that's kind of different. I have kind of naturally sweaty hands. It's like always 100 degrees here in Arizona, so it'll be interesting to see how that holds up. As far as distance from me to the steering wheel compared to the stock, I feel like this one's just a tiny bit closer because when I reach for the turn signal, it just feels a little bit further away, looking for the brights and whatnot. Not, not a bad thing, um, but I did get like the flattest steering wheel that Energy makes. So if you're getting one with a dish to it, whether it's Sparco, Energy, OMP, DND, Grip Royal, whoever, um, you might want to, you know, you might want to take your measurements, you know, know how deep your spacer or your quick release are, um, so you don't have a wheel that's like in your face. Uh, but this, I would say, is you know about right. I think what I'll do actually is I'll splice in um, a side by side of me driving this and then me with the stock steering wheel and then you can see how much difference there is in uh, depth. Then, since I do that, I'll do a before and after, or a side-by-side -side of like face on what the wheel looks like, you know, prior to and now.
could be wrong, but the wheel does feel a little skinnier um, than the stock one, which is fine. Uh, honestly, the thinner feel of it makes you feel a little bit more connected to the car, whereas the stock one, you feel, you know, more like the power steering is in control, the car is more in control, if that makes sense. This definitely makes you feel more, makes the, the driving of this car feel more mechanical or more engaging. Like, I feel a little bit more connected to the car with this wheel. All right, guys, I think that'll about wrap it up for the um, energy steering wheel uh, install. As far as my thoughts go on it, is it worth, you know, the $450 you'd spend on it? I'm going to say maybe. Um, if your car has a beat up steering wheel or you're a guy who goes to the track and you just like to feel that much more connected to your car, or if you just want to throw up the flag and say, hey, I think it's cool. I want it on my car. Dude, I get you. I totally get you. I think I think it is pretty cool now that I have one. So, can you get away with a stock steering wheel? Absolutely. You're just fine. This thing is not going to make or break the car, but it does add a little bit of a cool factor. There is a tiny bit more feel. And again, I think if you're going to go with a aftermarket steering wheel, I don't know how you beat Energy. I don't work for them. I don't get any money for this. But uh, they've got a huge short hub selection. Um, I I was kind of running into issues finding the the short hub for the Z with other companies um, every color you can think of and different styles in the quick release uh, so that's awesome if you're going for a theme with your car and then they've got just as many wheels as they have um, short hubs and quick releases so tough to beat energy tough to beat their price from what I can tell at this point it seems like a quality product we'll uh, you know I'll watch that suede and see how it see how it wears over the next year or so maybe update you guys later but I think it's pretty sweet for now now Settling some business from the last video, if you guys watched my review on the Zakustek louvers, I did pull them off. Uh, the paint has decided it wouldn't, it wants to chip a little bit more. So, uh, you know, I took the sticker off the back too. There, when I did take the sticker off, some paint lifted. I did have concerns about that. So, the paint is not great on these. Um, I also removed all the rubber inserts on the inside and replaced them with black uh, door molding trim on each louver, and that took a care. Uh, that took care of. A, of about 95% of the vibrations. I still hear a little bit at really high speeds, but for the most part, they're totally quiet now. So just wrapping it up, if you guys have been following me for a while, following kind of the build on this car, um, that's what happened at the end with the Zaku's Tech Louvers. Well, I think that will do it for today's video, guys. I appreciate you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more. I'll catch you in the next one. Listen.